We're now here on a second property in the Flurio. This is a different kind of landscape. We're actually much higher up now and we've got different soil types. Where we are now is in the, the bottom of a creek flat and because it's all in one paddock we're also going to go up the hill and have a look at the soil that's nearer the top of the hill because we think they're probably going to be two different types. As this is a harder soil, uh, using the uh, spade to dig into it isn't an option right now. It would be earlier in the season when there was more moisture. Uh, so I'm going to use the auger to take the soil samples. But firstly, looking around, we can see this is a hay paddock and it's been cut or mown. Um, so there's plenty of grass species in here. We're not seeing any of the indicator species on, that we saw on the other site. So we're not seeing Guildford grass or sorrel or fog grass. What we have got is a mixture of grasses, kaikuyu, rye, other kinds of pasture and hay mixes. It's um, grown quite tall along the creek line and the dam, which is a little further up. And we can see further up the hill where we look later that it's a little bit more sparse. So let's have a look at this soil. And as I dig it out, I notice that although it's moist, it's quite crumbly. So this soil, being heavier, has got some structure in it. So as we go further down, I can feel that the soil is getting a bit tougher to get through and I'm having to uh, pull it out of the auger because it's sticking a little bit. There's a little bit more moisture down there, which is fine. I'm also seeing some changes in colour, some mottling, and I've seen a couple of earthworms, which is great because that shows that earthworms are alive and working in this soil. Earthworms are a soil health indicator species. So if you've got earthworms, generally the more the better, your soil is more healthy. I'm also seeing roots that are down to a lot deeper in this soil. So the deeper the roots are, the more soil they're exploring to get water and nutrients. Digging's just got a little bit easier. We're getting a lighter soil type here. Lighter in colour as well. Still plenty of roots. Occasionally you can get topsoil having fallen down the hole. In this case I think we've just got some dark soil that's starting to appear. And you can find all sorts of things on creek flats and old river beds. Okay, that's a pretty good depth to go to. We've got about 50 centimetres, at least probably 60. So let's have a look at what we've got. So up the top here, topsoil. A little bit dry as you'd expect because it's late spring and things have been drying out. Plenty of roots, a nice crumbly soil. Things always break up with an auger but you can see how it's broken and you can see in this that we've got a mixture of larger pieces, peds they're called, and smaller crumbly ones. Then as we go down we've got more moisture We've actually even got uh, threads here where you can see where the top soil, the darker organic matter has go gone down an old wormhole or an old root hole. Probably a wormhole in this case. Um, holding together a bit more, 
still plenty of roots in it. Then down here a bit further, we've got grey colour, we've got an earthworm, we've got a little rock, we'll test that rock later and see whether it's got carbonate in it. I'll put that one aside a little bit. And then further down still, this is getting a bit lighter in the hand. We'll test the structure, uh, the texture soon. Still plenty of roots in it, which is great. And then down the bottom here, we've got a mixture of lighter, sandier soil. We've got some bits of clay that have got sort of yellow and almost greenish colours in them, which is interesting. We've got some little rusty coloured round pebbles um, that's called ironstone. They're rusty because, yeah, the iron in it has formed iron oxide. And we've got plenty of roots and we've got some dark soil as well, which may be from old tree root channels. It may have just been a deposit from earlier on in the, in the history of the soil. Okay, so the texture test. We've got our handful of soil. We add a little bit of water. A um, pop-top bottle is actually quite good for this sort of thing because you don't sort of tip it and get everything at once that way. And this one, the water's gone straight in. It's just absolutely soaked it up. As you can see, it's um, it's quite got quite a lot of colour in it. As I work it in my hands I can feel that it's sticky and if I rub my fingers together there's not much grit there. And I work it more and more and it starts to feel like plasticine. So this is a definitely a clay soil. It's got a little bit of organic matter in it at the top which is good. So when we roll it into a ball it goes straight there and holds. We roll it into a log, no problem. And then when we ribbon it, you can see that this is holding together quite well, making quite a long ribbon. I can ribbon this out to nine or 10 centimetres. It's quite easy to work in the hand, so I would call this a medium clay. So there we are, that's the top soil. Now let's see what we've got down the bottom. So down the bottom here, this lighter stuff, water's still going in very well, which is great. Don't need the grass. Yep. And it's absorbing quite a lot of water. Some of the clays will do that. They'll uh, absorb more and more water as you work it in your hands. Similar to the top, this one does feel like plasticine still. I'm not feeling sand as I rub it in my hands. So it's possible that this lighter stuff is not sand or anything. It's just a, a white form of clay, which you can find in some places. I can roll it into a ball and it holds together very well. I can roll it into a log. And when I ribbon it out, again, it ribbons very easily and holds together very well. So again, another medium clay. So from top to bottom, the texture is quite similar. So what else can we find out? Something that um, we would find interesting in soils in a river bottom or a river flat or anywhere that water tends to lie is looking at the colors. So color can tell us a bit about how much air goes into the soil. Up the top here, we've got this nice brownish color with the occasional bit of red in it, just streaks every now and then. And that suggests that most of the time this is fairly well oxygenated. Um, it's not, not waterlogged for very long. As we go down, we start to pick up mottles of different colors. And we'll get a close-up of this, but we can see grayish colors, bluish, greenish colors. And 
when we get right down the bottom, we've got a little bit of yellowish clay there, yellowish greenish. That suggests that these areas are areas that have been waterlogged for longer and the, chemical, the elements in the soil under anaerobic conditions will go to these yellows and greys and bluey greeny colours. And that's not surprising at the bottom of a valley where there's a creek running through because you would expect in this high rainfall area that you would get some saturation right at the bottom of the landscape. But on the whole, the structure of this soil is allowing the grass to grow. It's putting its roots right down and it's not really restricting the potential for growth here, which is good. So we'll have a look at the structure of this soil. So I'll take a crumb from up the top and I will place it in some water in this saucer. Now let's see how stable this soil is when it's put in water. So here's a crumb from up the top, just something about the size of a five cent piece. We pop that there. Something from about 20 centimetres. Pop that there. You always want to put the crumb into nice still water because if you pour water over the top of a crumb, it'll of course fall apart and then you won't know whether it was the poured water or whether it was just the soil. Here we have a nice little earthworm. He'll come out of the soil and I'll put him back so that he's safe in just a second. Here's some of the lower soil. And here's some from right down the bottom. Okay. Yeah, and we've seen, seen these. They're just sitting there in the water. The water's not discolouring. The, um, the crumbs have maybe fallen apart a little bit, but not very much. On the whole, it's holding together quite well, which is excellent. Okay, for our next test, we'll test the pH. So I'll use the saucer again. So from the top, put the top up there, then just under the surface, a bit further down, about 40 centimetres. And right at the bottom. So we take our pH solution here, put a few drops on each one. And some powder so we can see the colour. Alright, so we'll give that a couple of seconds for the colour to develop and then we'll compare it against our colour pH chart. So up the top here we can see probably about six and a half. Six to six and a half, which is in a very nice range actually for plant growth. So you've got good availability of plant nutrients, but it's not so acid that it's starting to shut things down. So excellent pH range there. Just underneath is very similar, six and a half. Further down, we've got seven. So it's slowly becoming more neutral. Then we've got about seven and a half. And again, about seven and a half right at the bottom. So it's gone from mildly acidic at the surface, which is fine, to neutral to mildly alkaline down below. And that's a really good range for plants to grow and get their roots down. As we've seen, there's roots all the way down this profile. We'll just try a, a drop of acid here. I'll, I'll move this earthworm because although they don't have much of a nervous system, I still don't want to acidify the poor beggar. 
Okay, so we're going to try on this little white cluster. We want to know, is it clay or is it carbonate? So we'll put a drop of acid on it. If it fizzes, then it's carbonate. If it does nothing, then it's just white clay. And nothing happened, so we know it's just white clay. We've had a look at this nice little river flat and we found it's like nice deep soil, roots are all the way down, good pH, um, good crumbly structure even though it's a heavy textured soil. So now we'll go up to the top of the hill and see what's different about that patch.